Hi, my name is Shannon Bride, and this is a brief explanation of a mathematical model of enzyme inhibition mechanism that I am currently working on. Blood coagulation is a system imbalance. It's full of pro and anticoagulants that are necessary for successful blood clotting. We have been investigating how a specific inhibitor works in the bloodstream that is not yet fully understood, and we'll explain how we are working to better understand it. Enzyme, when unbound, can activate substrate into product. This product is what goes on to initiate blood clots. Generally, to prevent overclotting, inhibitors will block the activation of this product. However, our specific inhibitor we have been investigating is different in that to effectively block the activation of product, the inhibitor must be bound to product. Then, this complex of product and inhibitor blocks the enzyme from activating more product. This does create a negative feedback loop where some product must initially be in the bloodstream for the inhibitor to prevent the further activation of more product. So how does this complex actually inhibit? The product inhibitor complex binds to the enzyme at two sites. This creates a stronger complex in which the enzyme cannot activate more product because it is no longer unbound. This is what reduces the number of blood clots in the system. Up until now, it is usually assumed that both bonds creating this complex occur in one step. This assumption is unlikely and we hypothesize that it has contributed to the inaccuracy of current models that use this assumed mechanism. These models have produced very inaccurate results. This plot shows the experimental data tracking the product formation in time overlaid with the model prediction. As we can see, these models don't match the shape or scale of the experimental data. So we are taking a second look at this reaction. Instead of assuming two bonds are created simultaneously, we will acknowledge that there are three bonds needed to create this larger complex that inhibits the enzyme. These bonds can occur in many variations. We have developed a new model to consider the multiple binding steps in different orders. So here is a visual of the mechanism we are proposing. This is obviously more complicated. We included all combinations of reactions by which this complex could be created. Our hope is that by including more detail, we will therefore produce a more accurate model. We use kinetics to build an ordinary differential equation model of the scheme and are currently performing further analysis on it because not all of the rates are known from literature. Currently, in the early stages of testing this scheme, we are seeing that it shows promise in matching the experimental data better than previous models. So far, we have been able to match the shape of the experimental data much better, but we still have a difference in scale similar to previous models. We will continue to work on identifying unknown parameters until we are satisfied with the accuracy of this reaction scheme. Once we refine these unknown rates in the model, we will add new and improved reaction scheme to an existing larger partial differential equation model. Here, we will be able to best understand how the inhibitor works in the bloodstream when flow is present. Ultimately, we believe we are closer to understanding this inhibitor than we were before by investigating this more complete reaction mechanism. Thanks to my advisor, Professor Lederman, for all of her help and guidance, and thanks to you for listening.